Hello, my name is Glassfoot, and welcome to a series that I'm calling D&D Character Tales. These are going to be stories of characters that I personally have played throughout my time of playing D&D, and while that's only been about two years, I have played quite a few characters. Most of them have died. Yeah, kinda sucks. But, um, I hope you all enjoy the series, and I would, pr I would like if you guys would... Um, give me pointers and whatnot and how I can improve these. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have access to much other in terms of backgrounds and whatnot. So what you're seeing is kind of what you're going to get. Please, I would love your tips and other information and feedback that you can give me. And with that, please enjoy the first tale that I have written. The tale of my first character, the half-orc ranger, Risak. Welcome, friends. I invite you to relax, grab a drink, and listen to the tale of a valiant hero. A hero that you might not expect, but a hero nonetheless. This is the tale of the half-orc, Risak. Born in a land far away, where humans and orcs came to a peace and did not attack each other on sight, half-orcs were still rare as it was uncommon for humans and orcs to fall in love. As a child, Risak was often mocked for his mother being an orc and his father a human which would cause him to get into fights as a child. As a chi also as a child, he would enjoy hunting in the woods, becoming good with the longbow and, in and tracking and other such feats. While he became proficient with the longbow in the woods on his own, his father trained him in the way of the sword, specifically the longsword, which he grew to prefer in combat. One fateful day when Risak was ten, the army came looking for his father. They, a dragon had attacked the kingdom, and they needed people to defend it. His father had been one of the best soldiers in the past, and while reluctant to go at first, the, his father eventually decided that the fate of the kingdom was more important than his own happiness, and agreed to go with them. This, unfortunately for Rusak, was the last time that he would ever see his father alive, and he was slain in the combat with the dragon. Upon returning, Rusak took up his father's sword and shield, refusing to ever buy a different one, and if in case they ever broke, would only choose to reforge them and use the new blades that came of his father's weapon. He would never lose this, despite many things occurring to him that almost cost him his weapon. A number of years later, Risak decided that it was time for him to strike out on his own. He left his mother and siblings, becoming a hunter, selling the meat and furs that he would kill in the woods for money. He would also, become, he would also work as a guide, or as a guard for those passing in the woods. One day, he accepted a job to guard a caravan, where he met two people that would become good friends of his. The human paladin of Bahamut, Eric, and the dwarf cleric, Adric. He also met three other half-elves, a wild magic sorcerer that he never really got along with, but wasn't the worst, and two half-elven druids that he, Eric, and Adric would eventually kill. On the way to the town of Greenhess, the group encountered goblins and kobolds attacking the villagers that were running from the town. They engaged and defeated the foes, all but, killing all but one, interrogating him for information. Upon discovering that the cult of Tiamat were the ones that were attacking the town, they entered and decided to defeat the cult, taking out most of them and almost falling a few times. They eventually tracked the cult to a cave, defeating all, defeating all that they found inside and stealing a couple of dragon's eggs that the cult seemed to have appropriated for themselves. The group from here traveled many places, following the cult, always trying to defeat them, becoming, finding themselves often one step behind the cult. At one point, they ended up in a town that was having a festival, where Audric and Risak entered a boxing match, where they won, and won a set of silver knuckles each, where Trisak used to help silver his weapon. The group eventually joined a caravan, and in this caravan, they had many interesting encounters with the folks. A few bandits, but nothing major. Until the merchant tried to buy Risak's sword. This, now, this sword was Risak's father, as I have told you before. But this merchant didn't know. The merchant also, the merchant offered much less than the sword was worth. And upon learning it was silver, offered more, but still not as much as it was worth, and Risak even then refused to part with the weapon, telling this man to fuck off, and he eventually did. The next morning after the event, Risak woke up and found that his sword was gone. 
Enraged by the fact that his father's weapon had been stolen from him, Risa tracked down the merchant that was trying to buy it from him last night and confronted him. Slamming him against his cart, he demanded to know where his weapon was, and the merchant swore that he did not know, even submitting to a search of his cart by Risak and Eric. Still fuming about the fact that his father's sword was missing, Risak went and searched the caravan, eventually finding out a female god had taken his weapon. Confronting her, he went and attacked, taking her down and almost killing her in rage, before Eric convinced him to not. She agreed to really return the sword and become a slave, with the promise that she would face trial at Waterdeep, and with the promise that if she tried to run away, Rusak would kill her. Rusak unfortunately never got to see her face trial, as she was released upon their entrance to Waterdeep, by the promise that she would never steal again. When in Waterdeep, the group ended up coming upon a doctor named Flankenstein, who agreed to trade their dragon eggs for custom mounts of whatever they would like. Rissok got a dragonfly with flaming wings that would attack with fire. After this, the group met up with the Council of Waterdeep, where they agreed to help them stop the cult of the dragon, and they went around to many other places after this, stopping them. This accepting of the quest from the Council of Waterdeep eventually led the group to an outpost, where they found that the cult had a smuggling operation. Upon this time, the half-elven sorcerer had her own quests that needed to be done, so she left the group. This was around the time that the group discovered the druids were secretly working for the cult, and dispatched them harshly. In the smuggling operation, Eric and Rissak it discovered a couple of scabbards with dragons on them that they took for their own weapons, because they thought they looked cool. And they continued on, eventually coming upon a group of bullywogs that lived at Castle Natir, a castle that the cults had taken over. The group decided to help the bullywogs in exchange for ridding the cult, and they received a base of operations in the process. In the process of ridding the cult from the Castle Natir, the, a couple of allies that the group had made along the way died or nearly perished, and so did Eric, Aldrich, and Rissak. After the battle, Eric, Aldrich, and Rissak, who managed to just barely survive, came upon a teleportation circle in the basement, and as a group, they used it and went ended up in another cult operation, this time a hunting lodge. Upon entering the lodge, they were waiting for the head of this location. And while waiting, they were attacked by a suit of armor that were, happened to be animated. Upon defeating the armor, Rissak discovered that the tapestry in the corner of the room was also emanating magic. He fired his longbow into the tapestry, destroying it. But as it turned out, it was just a teleportation point to go out into the woods for the hunting lodge. Eric and Rissak, the two who had been responsible for the destruction of the armor and the tapestry, were taken into custody and held by a jailer in a rather peculiar jail that Rissak still is traumatized by. Until the group managed to convince the jailer to let them go in exchange for embarrassing another member of the cult, a dragon mask user who had screwed this person out of their own dragon mask. And Rissak and Eric were let go, along with the promise to help stop this person. From there, the group made their way to, ca to Skyreach Castle. And they, after acquiring a couple of griffins to get to the castle, they managed to make it. Avoiding the cult and not dying to them on their way, before eventually meeting up with the storm giant who ran the castle. Upon befriending this giant, they discovered that the cult had appropriated the castle, and the giant did not exactly like them, for the giant did not like the idea of working with dragons. Upon their agreement to help rid the castle of the cult and all dragons, the storm giant agreed to give them the castle as a base of operations. The fact that the castle moved also helped them greatly. They went through, eventually found the black dragon mask wear that they were asked to embarrass, who Eric quickly seduced. After that event occurred, she revealed that she knew who they were, and that she knew they were not working for the cult. At this point, the group that had named themselves the Holy Trinidad and Company 
for the only three remaining members all worshipped Bahamut, ran. They were afraid. They did not want to die, and they came very, very close in this instance. They managed to hold themselves up and set up enough of an energy that they were able to get a long rest and replenish their energy. Unfortunately, they were surrounded upon awaking. They had a valiant fight with about four mages and the Black Dragon user, who Eric managed to slay in the combat. Unfortunately, Risak and the new ally company uh, had been separated from Aldrich and Eric by a wall of fire. Risak attempted to fly out with the aid of company, but he fell into the flame. Risak rushed one of the mages that he saw and was unfortunately defeated. Eric and Audric, seeing no alternative to save their friend company or Risak, ran. And they managed to get away. Company was killed, but Risak was not. Risak was brainwashed by the cult. He was then used later by them as a bodyguard during the ritual of Tiamat, during the final battle to the, try and defeat the god. When, once the god was defeated, it is unknown what happened to Risak, but he was not seen by his friends for some time. It is believed by many that he is just, still just as a ranger, working, making money for himself, and potentially making his way back to his family to see if they are alright. But one thing's for sure, the world will always remember the deeds of the half-orc ranger, Risak. Thank you all for watching the tale of the half-orc ranger Risak, my first character and still quite possibly my favorite. Um, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram, links are going to be in the description down below if you would like, and if you enjoyed this tale, please leave a comment telling me so, like, subscribe to my channel if you feel so inclined, and that is going to be all that I have for now. Anyway, peace out guys.